All right, Moodle 2.0 users, it's time to make a lesson, one of the most useful but more complicated activities inside Moodle 2.0. There are some differences from Moodle 1.9, so if you're already used to making lessons in 1.9 or before, you will find some changes in this tutorial. So before we build it, what does a Moodle lesson actually look like? The lesson activity is useful for creating a self-directed or prescribed direction of learning through content in your course. If you have more content than can be accomplished on a single Compose a web page, you might use a lesson to guide a user and to check for understanding during the content. I've got a sample lesson on frogs here in another course I built. In the sample lesson on frogs, we have an introduction page. This is the first page that gives me some basic information on what is a frog. At the bottom, I've set up jumps to two sections of my frog lesson, toads and frogs. If I click on toads, I'm taken to a page that's specific to toads. Clicking continue gives me more information just like turning a page. Where can I find a toad? And then a follow-up question about a toad. The follow-up question allows me to check for understanding throughout my lesson, and I can put them as frequently as I want. If I had gone down the frog's path, I'd get a different set of materials. This graphic shows us what it looks like from a tree standpoint. This is not how the lesson structure looks in Moodle, but is a separate graphic to make it clear for you. We have our introduction page in Moodle, three pages on toads that ends in a question, and then a second section on frogs. We start out with two pages of content on frogs, then a question page, then two more pages. The last page on frogs takes me off on two additional branches. These different forks in the road for your students are known as branches. You'll add content pages and question pages, and your jumps between pages will determine how those branches flow. This is how it looks in Moodle. Your pages are stacked up in a list, which you can reorder with the icons, edit, delete, or use this menu under Actions to add content underneath. It all looks very complicated right now. Let's start with Part 1, which is setting up the settings for your lesson. Drop down your Add an Activity menu and choose Lesson. Give your lesson a name. I'm going to call this The Writing Process. The settings available on the lesson page are elaborate. First, you can impose a time limit. Very useful if you'd like to make sure that students are progressing through it in a certain amount of time, maybe without looking up the answers to questions inside it. As in other Moodle activities, you have an available from and deadline, which you can enable. Then you have a maximum number of answers. What this means is that when you create question pages inside a lesson, like a multiple choice question, this is the maximum number of answers that can be there in any question. They're offering you this setting now, and it will affect all the question pages in your course. So my suggestion is to aim high. If you think you'll have more than four answers on any given page, dial it up a bit, and you can always leave your extra answers blank if on any page you don't need all six. Password protected lesson is pretty self-explanatory. Let's talk about grading. Grading can be out of a certain number of points or can be on a scale just like other assignments and the grade category allows you to drop it into an appropriate section of your grade book. Grading options. A practice lesson is going to mean that the lesson is not scored. Maybe it's something the students just go through for review. If it's not a practice lesson, then it will show up in the grade book and points will be counted. If the custom scoring is enabled, then a custom point value can be assigned to every question you ask in the course. This is useful if you'd like to count one question more heavily than another. Can the student retake the lesson? Yes or no. And if so, how will we handle the grade in those retakes? An average or the maximum that they've achieved? Displaying an ongoing score is useful for longer lessons, so a student can sort of see how they're doing. I'm going to say no to this for now. In the flow control settings, we can decide if we'd like student review enabled. This means that a student can go back and forth and can review content pages before answering a question without penalties. I'm going to say yes to this. Provide an option to try a question again, yes or no. And the maximum number of times, up to 10, that a student can retry a question without penalty. 
The action after a correct answer can be to follow the lesson path that you determine while you're setting up your lesson. These are called jumps and you'll see them later. Or you can set it to show an unseen page or an unanswered page for a more random effect. This is useful for a review for a quiz, for example. I'm going to say follow the lesson path so that I can fine tune it as I go. Display default feedback. I'm going to open up the help on this so I can read the phrase exactly. If enabled, when a response is not found for a particular question, the default response of that's the correct answer or that's the wrong answer will be shown. This prevents you from having to type that every single time when you go through your lesson. If you'd rather have custom feedback to your questions, leave that set to no. A progress bar can be displayed across the bottom to show your students how far along they are in the lesson. This is a really good practice to enable. If you don't want to show a progress bar, then on the first page of your lesson, give your users a heads up as to how much content there is in the lesson. I've received plenty of feedback from online learners over the years saying that when they go on a lesson, they like to know how long it's going to take them. Display a left-hand menu. A left-hand menu will allow you to have a navigation menu on the side so students can jump around to different sections of your lesson. If it's important that they follow your prescribed path and you don't want them jumping around, you might want to disable this. I'm going to turn it on so they can view any section they'd like. Display the left menu only if the grade is greater than. This is a new feature in 2.0. If you'd like the left-hand menu, but only after they've gone through it once, Let's say that I'd like them to get maybe an 80% or better. Then we'll show the left-hand menu. You can make them dependent on other activities, and you can set your common module settings at the bottom. Click Save and Display. You've now taken the first step towards setting up your lesson. This is a two-part process. First, you configure your settings page, and then you build your actual lesson. Check out part two of the tutorial to keep learning.